this is a rear brake rod. As you see, it's um, chrome plated, but it's very badly pitted. So it would be um, uneconomical to try and get the plater to plate that because he would spend hours trying to get it um, prepared smooth. So what we're gonna do, we've got another bit of rod here. This is just ordinary quarter steel rod. I'm gonna put threads on either end so that um, we can just use that. So we we'll pop onto the lathe um, here. So we could pop this through here. Uh, we're going to put a thread on it here. So we need a thread. Um, the length of the thread, so that's 5 8 thread. So what we're going to do is put a depth of 5 8 thread on here. So what we do here, you measure it on there and you put a little mark there so that's where you're going to thread up to right so then this is your um die as you see quarter 26 which is cycle thread so you swing that around there it's probably safer to take that out of there because that can grab you and so then what we're going to do we're going to go back on speed. I cut about 26 or 60. And we're going to bring this up here. And then we're going to put the die on here. But what we're going to do is put that there like that. So that pushes the die through up to there, right? So we've got some light in the jaw. We've got some cutting oil. So we've got some contact there. And off we go. Right, we've cut it up to that. So. So there you go, that's how you put a thread on uh, brake rod. Drop the chain guard out of position. Like that, so we've got the wheel out. Just have a quick look at the um, brake shoes when we can photograph that spacer in there because that's important to get it back together. Mm. Somebody's been in there quite recently because you can see not a lot of wear. Very important thing you've got to do here, which the previous person hasn't done, mark those. So when you're putting it back together, you've got them correct. So we just drop the wheel out. As we spoke about the tire before, um, pretty grotty. We've got some spare holes to weld up here too because as I said there was a pillion fitted to the rear mud guard in its life some time but we won't be fitting a mud a pillion because it's a bit crazy because if you were really going to fit a pillion you would have to make a frame out from the main frame the way the Vincents did but as it was an optional extra um, we'll never, we'll never, only ever owe that 
using the bike solo anyway. We don't carry passengers on the back of them. So we'll weld those up nicely and make that a, as it left the factory, not secured. So we drop that off here and that's um, coming out there. So that's the, the rear guard. A lot of work on that, as you can see. And um, then this is the uh, carrier. Um, we needn't worry about handed because you've got the lifting handle on this side and that's concaved in there for the toolbox. So um, it's not reversible. Another trick of the trade is, was whenever you get um, butchered up nuts like this, we'll do the renovation on the nut because there's no point digging down to Halfords because you wouldn't get any. So I'm just going to wire brush that off to see what the damage is. Quite a tricky process. But after you've done it for about 50 years, it's quite easy. So what we do to get the flats back on here again, not many people do this, but I do because it's quite heavy. Right, so now the next operation is to face it up on the lathe. Good as new. Uh, here, um, that needs a bit of um, attention. As you can see, it's had a hard life there. The chains flew off and uh, grunged up the guard. So we'll give that a little bit of dress up on the anvil here. And then we'll dress up the edges where it's been uh, Butchered up, so we can dress up the edges. So that's all the edges nicely dressed up. It looks uh, a lot better, a lot of symmetrical, and a um, little bit sticking out there. That looks a lot tidier and neater around there, and when you paint it, it liver looks a lot more sharper than um, what it was originally. Under the front end, um, bit of thing on spanners here. You see these spanners here uh, with this outstep on. They, they're not very good spanners because they can, with that lever, that come off quite easy. Whereas if, if you get a straight spanner like that there. It's much more sensible, but then again, that one's handier for for um, getting out around the edge of it. So, but if you can use a straight spanner, much better. We'll press on with getting the front wheel out. So we're going to drop. Probably hasn't been out for quite a long time. Almost due for set retirement, so that's 64 years. 64 years since it's been on the road. One more year, it'd be an old old age pensioner, wouldn't it? So that, uh, there you go, that one too bad. I think it deserves a new tire, don't you? <laughs> so, um, front wheel, what I'm doing now, I'll just go, pop it outside nice sunny day, get a bit of heat in the tire, which makes it an awful lot easier to get off uh, because old tires go solid. So we'll stick that out in the sun. And in five minutes, there'll be a bit of heat in it so we can get it um, out. Right then, we might as well drop the headlight off. So um, you need to watch those screws there because they're a special thread 
there's sort of a Lucas um, thread and you can catch a cold because they are specials and you can't just pop any old thing in them so uh, we'll keep those the reason why that's hard to come off you can see there's damage on here where it's been whacked into so that it's slightly deformed that's why it wouldn't come off easy so bit of metal work there so this is the nut that we couldn't get up on the um wouldn't come off so you've got to grab it on the inside like that it's quite tight so that's it crack now um obviously we just have this off not too worried about the <clears throat> the remains of the wiring harness because <clears throat> it'll all be a new brand new harness when we get round to it so we just chop those bits of wires off there you go that's the old headlight so we just sideline that for the moment because it's all got to be stripped out and dressed and looked after and might as well drop the horn off next so um I'm just going to take a photograph of myself because that's important that when you're putting it back together you get those which one goes on the inside and which goes on the outside so I might as well take one of these speed of mine to so I'm not wrecking my brains to see how it went back to get how it goes back together so we head into the front of my guard here these are all butchered up. We just replace all those because they're all well plus their best. Quite um, tricky here. I haven't seen this before. It must be some relevant. That spacer there. That looks like it. Just an ordinary Thatcher washer stuck on there for some reason. Again, I better take a photograph of that. Doesn't look quite uh, sensible, put it that way, I think. So I've got a photograph there of where that spacer goes. It's funny how that Thatcher washer stuck on there. Can't believe that. Let me get through here onto it. <clears throat> right, that's relatively easy. Give it a bit of a poke out. Right, front, front mod yard off. Use a bit of TLC here. It suffered a bit bashed up there, so I'll dress all that up. I'll give that a shot of WD-40 so those um, nuts should let go. This is the damper on the side here. Um, the steering damper, as you see, it's a friction damper. Um, very similar on the back. Um, I think these are Druid forks. I'll just check that out later. There'll be marks on them somewhere because manufacturers, very few manufacturers made forks. They, they um, just bought outside Druid uh, forks. They were the, the most popular, or Webb forks were another big manufacturer of forks. Uh, Big business in those days because they were probably making a quarter of a million bikes a year, the British industry. So if you made forks, there was a potential sale of a quarter of a million, so that was quite handy. Make sure that doesn't bounce on the floor because it's Bakelite and um, it's all in nice condition. Almost nigh impossible to get the hold of, so needs to be cared. That's a, a star washer goes on here, that's where you get your pressure on. We'll pop that over there too and then you get this here then you get into the friction dampers so that f pushes on there and that's where you get your damping from so the thing doesn't leap up and down in the air when you hit a bump that might just hold it yep success the damper is coming off now there you go there i should really have a photograph of that because is it reversible 
it is. So I better take a photograph of that just to show that that's the way it um, goes back to get it. There we go. Another friction damper coming off here. So I think that hasn't been off for a day or two, if ever. So that's the other damper. We'll stick that together, that goes like that. A bit um, reluctant. Right, there it goes. Right, that's it, so we can lift that out complete with a speedo. The cable that we couldn't get at was because that was locked in there, so we can address that later. Next step is we um, drop these links off, then the forks can go out that way, theoretically. Just a bit tight, but with a bit of persuasion, there you go. Um, Generally, this druid marked on the side of there or web, but it doesn't seem to be happening on this one. The reason why you use a copper mallet is because you don't damage the threads then. If you hammer it with a steel hammer, you butcher up the threads. I would like to mark those um, in case there's a difference in them. You see that, no, they're not, they're, they're parallel. But anyway, I'm going to mark top and bottom. So I'll just put that on there for the moment so that I can remember that was the bottom. This is the top spring support. Um, we better have that damp right there because that's um, in the way. Again, it's a friction damper working, working in there. The idea is to get the frame ready to go off for blasting. And painting, well, I can drop onto the engine. That's your rod. That suffered a bit, as you can see. We still ain't got the name. Patent. Looks very much like web to me. You see how hitting that sideways was much more satisfactory than trying to go over the top when it was going like that all the time. So anyway, here we go. <clears throat> Definitely hasn't been out for a day or two. In the early days, you could get different spring ratings, different sizes of springs for different forks. So uh, obviously heavy riders needed heavier springs than lightweights. Very important. You've got shims in here. You see? There and there. So you've got four shims per fork, which you got to remember to put back in again or the forks won't work too good. Any moment it's going to collapse in the heat. There you go. So, so there you go. There's the forks out. Spindles. Don't feel too bad. Often you get a lot of wear on these here, which means you've got to put new bushes in them. Just drop the yolks out. Chrome plated job, that one. No washer, which is strange. So we drop that out. That's the clamp bolt that clamps the job together. See how there's a, a little spud on there that locks it into the um, yoke to stop it spinning. So there you go. So theoretically that should drop out of there. Copper mallet again. Ball bearing starting to fly out, fly out here. The only thing you need to do here is to retain um, some of the balls so you know what size they are so we'll just grab a few of them like that and um, we'll keep those that's pretty crude in there it ain't been um, very happy in there for a long time another thing you got to watch is the balls in the top are the same as the balls in the bottom right they're quarter and those ones are quarter so that equal top and bottom that's just a, a good precaution because I have known where the you 316 on the top and um, you put quarter in and the whole thing locks up and doesn't steer 
Right, that's the fork side, so we'll have a look at that. That's the bottom damper here. That'll all need taking apart and checking out. Um, again, friction damper again. The reason why that won't come out, you've got to drop that spindle out there like that. It's there, but that drops out like that. So that's the uh, your bottom of your fork, and that's more dampers here. So fair bit of cleaning up to do. Um, and um, we just put that there for a moment. These are your um, shims that go on the side here. So we've got, we've taken a note of where they go when we go back together. And um, so now really, we've got the front end out. Just taking the rear stand off. Um, as you see, it's pretty badly eaten through here. And it's a bit skew with, so serious bit of work on that to do. Taking the tower off, what I do, I cut them off because it's a lot easier. The tower scrap, so I just get a disc cutter, take it away from the rim, cut it off, bang, off. Use a lot of time, a lot of effort, and flying skin generally. So um, that's the way to get your tires off. There's not much life left in that. I think it's uh, well past its MOT uh, certificate time. That's the drive for the speedometer there. What happens, you've got a gear in here and a gear in here, and that rotates the gearbox, and you get the drive to the speedo cable. It's got to obviously be uh, calculated to get the correct speed. Brick shoes well worn out, well past their best. So we'll get those off to um, relining, relining services over in Cardiff. So we'll have a look at this wheel. Um, we don't do what most people do, ply in, cut this hub out of the rim and then discover they ain't done some very critical measurements. We place that across there, and then we measure the offset, which looks just in metric 1516, or maybe just a fraction under an inch. We need to measure the spokes up, and notice all the spokes go in from the face side. So you, we've got to make a note of that. The spokes. Uh, six inches and across once. And the next measurement we need <coughs> is the spokes on this side. <coughs> so once again we measure the spokes from there to there. So this one here crosses once, twice, three times. So what I do next, get rid of the rim tape. So we decide on that one there. You need to keep that. You need to keep that. And then we weld them back together again. That's what you end up with there. So you've got two spokes. That's from the rear. One side, the other side. That's a spoke gauge which tells you the width of the spoke, number eight, right? Number eight. But you'll find with these ones here, eight, 10 butted. Are you with me? So you've got eight on that side, the swage down there, and then the main spoke is 10 gauge. These ones here look far too light for me. I feel they're not correct. And I'm not gonna put as light a spokes in as those. I'm gonna stick to t eight, 10 button. Right, so we've got the length of those, we've got the gauge of the spokes, we've got the number of crosses, and we've got the offset. So it's inch and 16, 16, 15, 16 offset, brake side, spokes going, hello Olga. Hello. We've got the, the flanges on there, length of both spokes, the number of crosses, and the size of spokes. So. 
that's the front done, right? If you place that on there like that, if you get the valve there, right? The, the valve hole there, and I'm gonna put a mark on here, so when you come to rebuild the wheel, you can put the valve hole there, and you should have a good start then on the position of the spoke angle. So we'll put a mark there. That's the rear rim we've got. We managed to have one in stock. Front one we'll have to order it in. When I'm ordering spokes, I just send those to central wheel. That's what I want. I don't give them any dimensions because there's lots to think about. There's nine different angle heads on them. That's 90 degrees. Uh, spoke nipple can vary. So if you just send them two of the originals, um, they should get it right. Right, off we go. Four thirty six, thirty eight, forty, forty hole. Right, so we need to pop that on the drawing. Forty hole room. And also it's a WM2 rim. Um just experience I know you get three different widths of rim. Have a look at the front brick. Um again single cam. Twin cam brakes is when you've got two cams there. And the advantage of two cams is that when you push that, it only opens that way. Are you with me? So when you have twin cam, both brake shoes come out together like that. So you get far bigger contact area. There you go. There's a couple of... Um, plates you need to wash here these are <clears throat> that's aluminium so I often put steel pads on there so that the cam that works here didn't chew into the um, aluminium um, cam doesn't look too bad and um, should be a decent sort of break springs don't look man enough for the job for me a lot happier with bigger springs than those but um, that's it, new imperial thought. So we'll keep the cam and the springs together. These plates, because you don't want to lose those. We've got a bit of a problem. That's the back hub. I never noticed that spacer, that's important. See that spacer there, they put that in for alignment. I'll take a photograph of that. But as you see, there's been damage here where some time in its life, um, it's cracked and the blokes try to weld it in situ. Most people would try and turn that on the lathe, but I'm going to grind it off because of better control of what's happening. So stick it in the vase here in case it takes off. That's another stupid thing. Two grease nipples. I've never seen that in my life before. You know, why on earth would you want two grease nipples in a hub? Much quicker than the lathe. Steel cut most of the crud off, so now I'll try and get into the original spoke holes to see, and then we'll have to re weld the lot again together. Still quite tight. Um, I thought that would have come out actually. Maybe put a little bit of heat on. Right, I've got one out now, so nearly out. So what we'll have to do is re-weld that proper and then redo the holes. 
because that weld is very poor quality. But obviously that's cracked across there. Probably due to someone over tightening this spoke so they've just ripped the thing apart. So anyway, we're pretty well up to speed. We just drop, drop this apart and um, get it to, um, ready for grip blasting and then the painters. Mm -hmm. 